important to write about. Here's a mystery for all of you. I don't care what your political background is. And it isn't like I'm anti-left. I've made videos documenting this. I know why there's a left wing. There's a left wing because inequality is a problem. It's a way worse problem than the radical leftists like to admit because you can't lay it at the feet of capitalism and the free market. Inequality is a way worse problem than that. But it's definitely a problem. And because inequality is a problem, you need part of the political structure to speak up to the, for the people who end up arrayed at the bottom of hierarchies. It's crucial. Someone has to speak for them. That's the place of the left. But then, but then consider this. So we, we, can get, we can state that. The right speaks for hierarchy and the left speaks on behalf of those who are oppressed by inequality. Good. We need that dialogue. The radical left. Okay. We know from 20th century history that things can go too far on the right, no one disputes that, and that things can go too far on the left. And we also know that when things go too far, it's seriously not good, right? So when things went too far on the right, then we had 120 million people die in the Second World War. And when things went too far on the left, we had God only knows how many people murdered as a consequence of internal repression, at least 100 million. And we risk putting the entire planet, we risk putting the planet into flames. Okay, so that's the consequence. All right, so now, in the aftermath of World War II, let's say we've come to some sort of sociological agreement, I would say, that you can identify the radical right-wingers. When people make claims of racial superiority, you put them in a box and you say, well, you're outside of acceptable political discourse. And so you saw that with William F. Buckley in the 60s when he started his conservative review. He dissociated himself from the David Duke types. And you saw it more recently with people, for example, like Ben Shapiro, who immediately distanced himself from the Charlottesville types. Okay, so now we, we kind of have a sense of where you've crossed the damn line in your ethno-nationalism, right? As soon as you move into the racial superiority domain, ethnic superiority domain, it's like, no, you've, you've got to be dangerous. All right, here's a question. Where the hell do you cross the line on the left? Exactly. Well, the answer is who knows? Well, that's not a very good answer. I would say it's incumbent. It's incumbent on people in the center and in the moderate left to say, look, things can go too far on the left. And here's how we know that's happened. And that hasn't happened at all. Now, I think there's a reason for that. I, I think there's a technical reason as well as a motivational reason. Two technical reasons. It's harder for people on the left to draw boundaries. Because people on the left aren't boundary drawing types. They're boundary dissolving types, temperamentally speaking. So that's a problem. The second problem is, is it doesn't look to me like there is a smoking pistol on the left that's as obvious as racial superiority doctrines. You know, it's like... There, in Canada, there's a lot of push for this triumvirate of, of radical ideas, diversity, inclusivity, and equity. Which, diversity, it's like, well, who's against that? It's like being against poverty. Inclusivity, well, yes, of course we want people included. Equity, that's a more bitter pill to swallow, because that's equality of outcome. And for me, that's a marker. It's like, if you're talking about equality of outcome, you've gone too far.